The screen is huge, it's always connected to the internet, it's got a high quality camera, we don't carry CD players or mini disc players. The smartphone has basically ruined the tech industry. <laughs> Nothing else is like interesting anymore. Smartphone, smart watch, smart tablet, smart glasses, everything's smart, but is it just me or is technology just boring? We're gonna be talking about all that and more, but first, coffee. Let's go and get the grinder. Essentially, well, first of all, today's coffee is Brazil. Mmm, tasty beans. I actually put this on Twitter recently, but I was thinking about all the tech that's coming out and about the fact, about whether I really need to be buying a new iPhone this year or not. Because I've got the iPhone XS. This is the one that came out right after the iPhone X. And I understand that essentially if you want a large upgrade, you generally wait two years. If you buy a new iPhone every year, you're not really going to notice much of a gap. It's like, okay, it's got a slightly better camera, or it's got a slightly better thing, but if you want a larger difference between your smartphone of the previous generation, you generally wait two years. And, and actually most people buying smartphones are on two-year contracts, and, and I think sometimes even three-year contracts. Let's grind! When I was doing this channel a few years ago, it seemed like new stuff was coming out all the time and it was interruptive, disruptive technology that was going to massively change the way we live our lives. And what's actually happened over the course of those years is that, you know, we've got really great new smartphones, we've got smart watches, we've got all these super thin tablets and we've got highly graphics capable gaming consoles and we've got virtual reality. It all seems like it should be really exciting. So why does it all seem so boring to me? I've started to realize that all the stuff that comes out, and even though I buy it sometimes and try it, it all just seems so non-essential. For example, a product like the Apple Watch, right? I wanted to really love the Apple Watch, and technologically, it's very impressive. It's a very small piece of technology. It's really not that thick. The battery doesn't last very long, but what it's capable of doing is really impressive. And what they've been doing with these successive iterations, because this is actually like a Series 2 Apple Watch, the 3, the 4, the 5 that came after it, now they've got like an always-on display, the battery life is a little bit better, it can actually sense when you've fallen down, it can call the ambulance for you. All this stuff seems really great. But for some reason it just never feels essential. When I'm leaving the house to go out, I'll often think about whether I need to put on my Apple Watch because I don't put it on in the morning because it's often sitting on the charger. And so if it's sitting on the charger and I'm about to go out and I think to myself, do I need to put on my watch otherwise we'll be able to tell the time? The answer is no because on my smartphone I can check the time on there. And most of the time I'm always sitting around with my smartphone like this on the train or I'm traveling somewhere and I'm checking Twitter and basically I'm, I'm holding my smartphone so often that the necessity to wear a watch has basically disappeared. And so it's a shame because the smartwatch is like a technology that we needed a few years before the smartphone became a thing or before cell phones became a thing. The watch was a really useful tool because we always needed to know the time and we didn't have a device on us that was always telling us the time. But if you check your screen time, it says like you spent two hours this week on your phone or you spent eight hours this week on your phone or you've spent 16 hours looking at your phone this week. That's way longer than you've ever spent looking at your watch. And the thing is, we just always know what time it is because we're always looking at a device that has a clock on it anyway. And so even though the Apple Watch is really impressive, the fact that it's a watch doesn't make it essential anymore because the watch just isn't an essential device anymore. And if the watch is an essential device to you, it's probably because it's a fashion object. And the thing about the Apple Watch is there's really one model, one shape, one design. And even though you can change the band on here, really, if you want to be fashionable and you want to go somewhere and look posh, you probably want to have one of those lux luxury watches. Something that says a little bit more about how much money you have to spend on expensive watches. What I found is that after the Apple Watch came out, I don't think it's had really too much effect on the luxury watch category because if you're all dressed up and fancy and then you add to your outfit an Apple Watch, then the Apple Watch is such a, I, it's such an iconic, everybody knows what it is object. 
that it kind of overpowers whatever it is you're actually wearing. It doesn't like accent your style. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that it's not a very essential object anymore because the watch isn't what it was before cell phones and smartphones became a thing. We have the time and it's right here. Okay, so I may have focused a little bit too much on the Apple Watch, but I think probably the point that I'm trying to say here is that the smartphone was just too good. As an invention, it was literally everything we needed. We now have the internet in the palm of our hand, and not only that, we also have the time. And so the Apple Watch, well not just the Apple Watch, smart watches in general, just became this inessential thing. I think the idea is that you always wear your watch, and so the thing that you're always wearing ought to be the thing that has all of your vitals on it. It's got your cardio, it's got your, it can call the ambulance for you. If you're running, it's got your timers, it's got your stopwatch, it's got your MP3, it's got your music, it's got everything on it. The idea was the device that you're always wearing should be this massive essential thing that you've always got on you. And unfortunately, the watch is no longer that object. It really is the smartphone. The smartphone is the essential thing that you've always got on you. The only thing is that you need a pocket. You need somewhere to put it. And so actually, in theory, the watch is better because you don't need a pocket for it. So even if you've got an outfit that doesn't have pockets, then it's this super convenient thing that you can still wear. The thing is, it doesn't function nearly as well as a smartphone. This is not a knock on the technology or the design of the watch. It's just by nature, when you put this thing on your wrist, and I'll, sh I'll, just, I'll just show you later, when you put this thing on your wrist, you now need to use not one, but two hands in order to operate it. And that is one of the critical issues with the smartwatch. When you've got it, when you've got it raised up, you essentially have to, you can't use the hand that's wearing the watch, you have to use a second hand to press the functions on it. And unlike a smartphone, you can, basically a smartphone, you can use all with one hand. So you could be holding your shopping in one hand, you could be taking care of your children, feeding them with one hand and using your smartphone in the other, although really you probably should be focusing on, on feeding your children with both hands. The other big one for me is VR, and I own multiple VR headsets, and every time I buy one I think, okay, I'm gonna watch all my movies on this, I'm gonna play all my games on this, I'm going to do my computing on this, I'm gonna do so much stuff with this VR thing, that VR uh, virtual is like the future office, or the future of where I want to be all the time. And the thing is, it's just not. I've ended up constantly thinking, okay, I want to play some games right now, I think I'll just pick up my arcade stick and sit in front of this monitor. Or I'll, sit in, I'll pick up my arcade stick and sit in front of the TV. Or pick up my Switch. And basically, again, it's, it's come to the same thing. VR was probably this holy grail of digital life, maybe 10 years ago when we were still thinking about it. But now that we have the smartphone, and I'm sorry that it always comes back to the smartphone, we just don't need VR. We have the internet in our hands. Maybe we're not fully immersed in digi the digital world, but that we don't, it turns out, we don't need to be fully immersed in the digital world. As long as we can hold the digital world in the palm of our hand and bring it everywhere else that we go, it turns out we don't need to be living within it. Put that on the cup. Pour this into the mug. Mmm, Brazil W, which I imagine just means Brazil double. I don't know what's doubled, but there's W on it. Let's taste this Brazil. I feel like I'm sitting in a hammock and I'm breathing in the air. It's a little bit too hot. It's like getting into a car that's been sitting in the direct sunlight and just kind of enjoying the fact that it's just way too hot. I don't want it to sound like I'm against smartwatches or that I'm against VR. 
or that I'm against all the new tablets that are coming out with slightly better graphics or are slightly thinner than before or they've all got touch bar panels a bit of a screen here and a keyboard here and I just feel like I've seen it before I feel like there was a time when the mini disc player was out or maybe when the CD player was out and no one could figure out how to get beyond the CD like the CD was incredible quality music. We had the cassette and it always had a bit of a hiss to it and we had loads of technology to like reduce noise and reduce hiss on our equipment and then the CD came out and it just obliterated everything to the point that even when Minidisc came out afterwards it was just like okay yeah the Minidisc came out but it's basically just a CD and a little bit smaller and a little bit more bothersome because now we have to like make them ourselves and we, we go to the shops and we buy the CD and now we can't put it in our Minidisc players and so we have to go home we have to like rip our CDs to our Minidiscs first which takes like 74 minutes and then we put it into our Minidisc player and then we decide that we want to have a slightly different mix and it would like actually the Minidisc Although it was a fantastic piece of technology, it had all this promise, but it was in it was non-essential. But anyway, just to explain, if anyone doesn't know what mini disc is, it was like a small mini CD, but music was still being sold on CDs. So in order to bring this music around with you on your mini disc player, you had to burn your CD to a mini disc, or you need to buy a mini disc album, or you needed to put that CD onto your computer with like a digital system and then burn those mp3s back onto minidisc and make like mixtapes and stuff. Essentially it was a phenomenal technology and enthusiasts loved it but the truth was the world wasn't ready for it and the industry wasn't built for it. The industry was still built around the CD. Anyway I feel like similarly right now we're trying to find out what comes next because we all loved when the iPad came out. The marketing thing about the iPad when it came out was that you could hold the internet in your hand. And so it was like the next step from the smartphone. And so although really nothing else as disruptive has come out after the smartphone, the iPad has come really, really close because it's a much nicer, big brother, big sister product to the smartphone. But even though we've got tablets, we don't see people generally walking around with them and checking their maps on their tablets. I saw this in Japan. Some people were like chatting on their iPads instead of a, instead of a phone. They're using it as their, their map and all that. But we've like gone past that era and we've gone back to the smartphone. And I just can't think of anything that really tops the smartphone. It tells the time. It plays games. It doesn't play games as well as the Switch does, but we'll go, I'll get into that in a moment. But in most cases, probably more people play games on smartphones than people who play games on PS Vita or Nintendo Switch or something like that. You know, I don't even carry around a nice camera with me anymore. I used to spend money on GoPros and Sony's little action cameras. But most of the time, even if I'm cycling, I'm mu I'd much rather just like pull my smartphone out of my pocket while cycling and I'll just take a shot like this. It's got optical image stabilization. It's got high quality quality camera, even if I need to zoom, there's actually two lenses so I can zoom in now as well. The screen is huge, it's always connected to the internet. The smartphone has basically ruined the tech industry. <laughs> it was interesting before, and now that we've got smartphones of this caliber, nothing else is like interesting anymore. We don't carry CD players or mini disc players or MP3 players anymore because it's got you know, iPod, it's got iTunes built in, you can listen to music, Spotify. Technically, even VR isn't really essential anymore because basically if you buy one of those Google Glass things, not Google Glass, you know what I'm talking about, Google Cardboard. If you buy like Google Cardboard, you can slot your phone into it and you can use your phone as VR. It has all the hardware required. To be honest, the processor in this is probably more expensive than the type of thing that you get in dedicated VR headsets because they can afford to. If this is gonna, if they're gonna charge you a thousand dollars for this device anyway, it has the ability to have more powerful hardware in it than an actual dedicated VR device. I used to have a Kindle, I used to read books on my Kindle that I don't need to bring around anymore because my smartphone has a giant screen and I can read all my books on it and if I need to download new books I can still buy them on here. You know we don't need sound recorders anymore because you can plug a microphone into this or you can just use the microphone that's built into this. This has got a really great microphone on it. I don't need to bring my laptop around anymore because it's got video editing software in here. Actually I think of all the main big things that I like to cover on this channel. It's probably like graphics tablets, 
gaming consoles and other technology. And for graphics tablets, it's just like after the iPad came out, there was really like no other graphics tablet really worth playing around with. Of course, I like the Mobile Studio Pro because I've got my hover cursor, but apart from the hover cursor, like now that we've got Clip Studio Paint on here, we've, also, we've already got Procreate, and then Adobe's got Fresco that's just come out. Essentially, the iPad and the Apple Pencil really probably is a very, very, very difficult technology to beat because it's the screen is so high quality, it's so, the glass is so thin, it's very difficult for any graphics tablet manufacturer to beat the iPad and the Apple Pencil. So I'm trying to figure out what is supposed to be exciting in the tech world, or just in general in the shopping world, in the sort of world of things that you can buy that are exciting. What is actually still interesting? And I'm having trouble trying to figure out what it is, which is probably why for the past year and a half or so, I've been focusing mostly on fighting games because with fighting games, you just buy a fighting game, the one that you like, and you just practice it and you get good at that game. And essentially, if you've got your fighting game, let's say it's Street Fighter 2 or Street Fighter 5 or Undernight Inbirth or Blaze Blue Cross Tag, any of these games, you can basically just buy that one game, just practice it, and then you really don't need to buy anything else. I think that's actually part of the reason why I don't feel any need to buy other stuff is because essentially I'm constantly like I could go out and go shopping and buy some new RPG Apple watch or a new smartphone or a new tablet but essentially it always comes down to but none of those things will satisfy the fact that really I just want to be a little bit stronger <laughs> at the fighting games that I play and so essentially I can stay home for like three or four hours just practicing a fighting game and have no real need to spend more money on other tech I look at the tech that is coming out and essentially here's what seems to be exciting 5G is coming out, which means internet without a broadband connection at home is gonna be really fast. Hooray. But it's like non-essential. 5G is gonna be fast and it's going to be, it's gonna change a lot of things, but it's still like a non-essential technology. It's just faster. I think more stuff is happening with VR. Even though I think it's really amazing when I do use it, when I'm not using it, I don't feel like I need to get my VR headset and do this in VR. It's like, well, if I need to watch a movie, yeah, it's kind of fun to be in the virtual Netflix room with that fireplace. Or I could just watch it on my tablet, which is just as good. If there's anything that should be exciting and should become massively essential, and could massively change our lives. I really do think it's augmented reality. And if you don't know what augmented reality it is, just imagine instead of a VR headset, it's just plain glass. You've got a pair of glasses and it overlays your world. So instead of looking at your smartphone for a map, it would you just look at your actual world and you'd see virtual arrows. Imagine your real life with 3D graphics superimposed on top of it. The reason why I think that augmented reality, and we still don't really have a very good version of it yet, the only reason I think that augmented reality probably is the only thing that's going to disrupt the world and really make itself essential is because it does what the smartphone does. The smartphone said, okay, you want all this stuff, I'm gonna put it in the palm of your hand. That way, you can take it everywhere. And even when you don't have it, you're gonna wish that you did have it. You're gonna be like, oh, where's my phone? I can't find my phone. You ever felt, felt, felt like that? You've ever lost your phone or you don't know where it is in the house and you start to panic? And even though you're supposed to be studying or you're supposed to be doing anything else, you're like, where's my phone? I've got to find my phone. It's that, you know exactly what I mean. That's why, that's the definition of what I mean by essential. We feel like we can't live without our phone. I need to know what's going on on Twitter. I need to know what's going on in the comments. I need to be able to use my camera so I can take a picture of something. I need to be able to listen to some music. I need to know what time it is. Everything about the smartphone is massively essential. And tablets don't do that. The smartwatch doesn't do that. VR doesn't do that. Even 5G won't do that. A new tablet with a touch panel on it, that's not gonna do that. But AR, that could make itself massively essential. It's like the Jedi Council, you know, when they've got all those holograms sitting in those chairs, but if you don't have the glasses, you see nothing. So essentially, without your AR glasses, you're missing out. That's another definition of what I mean by essential. If your AR glasses, when you just looked up into the corner, it automatically knew you were looking in the corner and it showed you the time when you didn't have your glasses, you'd be like, what time is it? I'm gonna do the gesture where I look up to the right. <gasps> Nothing's there. 
Usually I know what time it is just by looking up to the right. I need my AR glasses. And if it becomes an essential thing, I'm just like, oh, there it is. And it just shows up. That's what AR could do to make itself essential, necessary. I can't live without it. Of course you can live without it. Just like, of course, you can live without your smartphone, although it's getting harder and harder. Just waiting for the tech world to be interesting again. And it's like, right now it's just, 5G, more screens, more cameras. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for today. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff. And I'll see you all in the next Nihongo Gamer video.